Hello, Anthony here with Backyard Ecology. Today I'm going to talk about real life Pokemon you might be able to find in your own backyard. In fact, I have one hiding right there. Right there. Honestly, folks, we all know Pokemon aren't real, but most of them were based on real life creatures. And today we are going to talk about one of the most fascinating ones found in Eastern North America. That critter being the Spicebush Swallowtail Butterfly and its super strange caterpillars, which were the inspiration for the Caterpie Pokemon. The Spicebush Swallowtail is a beautiful black butterfly with reddish orange, white, and blue markings. It can often be found on a variety of wildflowers and often is seen puddling on moist soil, mud puddles, or stream banks. Spicebush swallowtails range across the eastern United States and extend into the Great Plains. Male and female spicebush swallowtails look very similar, but the males will have a green wash above the spots on the wings, and the females have a very definite blue wash above the spots on the wings. Both sexes mimic the pipe vine swallowtail butterfly, which is toxic. Swallowtails can be very hard to tell apart. If you'd like to see a video on identifying the different species of swallowtails, please comment below. Spicebush swallowtails are often seen mating on or near host plants, in this case, a spicebush. Host plants include all members of the Lauraceae family, but in the eastern United States, the two most common are spicebush and sassafras, although in the deep south and Gulf Coast states, red bay and swamp bay are also commonly used. Currently, the biggest threat to the spicebush swallowtail is the uh, introduction of laurel wilt disease in the United States, which affects native North American Lauraceae. If you would like to learn more about laurel wilt disease, please listen to the Backyard Ecology podcast. Links are in the description. After mating, the female will choose a host plant and lay single eggs on the undersides of the leaves. Female spicebush swallowtails tend to prefer younger plants to lay their eggs on, such as this sapling sassafras tree or these spice bush nursery stock which were covered with spice bush swallowtail caterpillars early stage caterpillars are a shiny brown black with white markings and not well defined eye spots they look like they are wet but they are actually dry that newly hatched caterpillar looks like something familiar it should it's something we all see just about every day bird droppings. Why look like bird droppings? A couple of reasons. One, nothing really eats bird droppings. And two, bird droppings are everywhere. If you look at plants, there's bird droppings all over them. So it's just a great camouflage that makes the caterpillar just disappear into the environment. If you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to Backyard Ecology. The caterpillars have another trick to avoid predators. They make leaf shelters. Basically, they fold a leaf over onto itself, making a taco that they can hide in during the day, and then they come out at night to forage. When looking for these caterpillars, it's much easier to spot the leaf shelters than it is the actual caterpillar. Early stage caterpillars will only fold over the edge of a leaf, while later stage caterpillars will fold an entire leaf in half. They start by putting down a mat of silk across the middle of the leaf, as can be seen here. As the silk mat dries, it shrinks and pulls the edges of the leaves towards each other until the sides are touching and the taco-shaped leaf shelter is complete. As the caterpillar grows and molts, its color lightens, it loses the white, and its eye spots become more prominent. After its fifth molt, the caterpillar is a bright green with very distinguishable eye spots, complete with a white reflection mark. This bright green coloration and the eye spots are yet another way the caterpillar avoids predators by mimicking the green snake, a common non-venomous snake found throughout eastern North America where it forages among low shrubs, ironically, for caterpillars and other insects. If looking like bird poop or mimicking a snake is not enough to deter a predator, the spicebush swallowtail caterpillar has one more trick, the osmotarium, which is an extendable forked organ that is bright orange in color and produces foul odors to deter the predator. It also enhances the snake mimic effect. 
please excuse the Photoshop on this. I did everything I could to get a caterpillar to extend its osmotarium and uh, they just would not do it. So I drew one in and it looks pretty much what they look like. The caterpillars are orange in their final stage. This is camouflage for when they get off of the host plant, have to crawl across leaf litter on the forest floor in order to find a place to pupate. Once finding a suitable location, the caterpillar will attach itself to a twig or plant stem with a line of silk, begin the pupation process in the formation of a chrysalis. The chrysalis is either green or brown depending on the season. Those made during long days when plants are green are going to be green. Those in shorter days will be brown. All chrysalises that will overwinter will be brown in color for camouflage purposes. The chrysalis also has a distinctive pair of horns at the head end. In the spring, the butterflies emerge from the overwintered chrysalises, and the strange story of the spice bush swallowtail starts all over again. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the Backyard Ecology channel for more information on native plants, native critters, and exploring nature in your backyard. Thanks for watching.